in the UK, there's the correct way to signal at roundabouts and then the way that many people actually signal at roundabouts. And if you understand how people actually signal, it can help you when it comes to determining whether or not you should stop or go at a roundabout. But before I get into that, I'm gonna quickly go over how you should signal at roundabouts as set out in the highway code. Unless signs or road markings indicate otherwise, when you go left at a roundabout, signal left on approach and continue signaling to leave. When taking an intermediate exit, you should not normally need to signal on approach, but signal left after you have passed the exit before the one you want. When taking an exit to the right or going full circle, signal right on approach and just like taking an intermediate exit, you would signal left after you have passed the exit before the one you want anything past 12 o'clock is normally considered right. Now that you've seen how you should signal at roundabouts, let's take a look at how people actually signal in my hometown, which is Colchester. Firstly, let's see if people signal left when turning left at a roundabout. The white car did, the gray car did, the next gray car did, the next gray car did, they're all gray. Oh, we have a black car, that is signaling. Now let's see if people signal when they're in traffic. Well, the white Ford Fiesta is, but it doesn't look like anybody else's. They seem less inclined to signal when they're in a queue. I genuinely stood at that roundabout holding my camera for 10 minutes and nearly everybody who went left at that roundabout used their signal. But as you can see in that clip, when the traffic started to slow down, people were less inclined to signal. And it makes sense why because it's obvious where they're going. They're in a queue of cars leaving the roundabout. They feel less inclined to use their signal because they feel it's obvious where they're going. I'm not saying it's right. Confirming that they are taking the exit would be better. What I am saying is that you should still be able to make a decision if you wanted to pull into the roundabout. When you look right, you can see the traffic is slow. You can see that they're lining up to leave the roundabout. And also they're slow you have time to get going. So you should still be able to make a decision. Now let's take a look at people going ahead at a roundabout. Do they signal left before they leave? Both those black cars didn't signal and the white car's not signaling, but the car waiting to turn left into the roundabout is signaling as most people do in the UK. Red car's not, the light blue car's not. Haven't seen anyone signal to leave this roundabout yet. Again, the car waiting to turn left at the roundabout is signaling. And now we have a queue, it's very unlikely anyone is gonna signal. Ah, starting to speed up again now. Let's see if someone clicks the indicator stalk down to say they're gonna leave the roundabout. Anyone? Someone? Orange car's not. How about the silver car? Come on, give me a signal. No. All right, last one, van. Are you gonna signal? No. Not one car signaled to leave at this exit. No, no they don't. Most drivers in the UK don't bother to signal left when they leave a roundabout after going straight. And I am gonna use the word most because it really is most. It is better to signal left when you leave a roundabout because it helps others pull into the roundabout. But most drivers in the UK treat it like a mini roundabout where you can go straight and you don't need to signal at all. But this information can help you because if you're waiting to pull into a roundabout and you look right and there's cars coming from 12 o'clock and they're not using their signals at all, well, that probably means they're going straight. And if they're in the lane furthest from the roundabout, their left lane, that's also confirmation that they're going straight and you're gonna have time to get going. What if they were coming round though? That leads me on to the next one. Do drivers generally signal right when they go right around roundabouts? The blue truck is signaling to go right at the roundabout. Also, it's in the lane closest to the roundabout, which is a good clue it's coming round. Try to use a vehicle's position as well as its signal to figure out which way it's going. The brownie, ready colored car is using its signal to go right and there's a silver car close to the roundabout which is confirming it's coming round with its signal. There's a blue car approaching a roundabout with the signal on to say it's coming round. So it seems most drivers use their signal if they're turning right. This bike, that's also using its signal. And the van, no, that is not signaling. So 
Most drivers signal to go right at roundabouts, but not all. So most drivers do actually signal right when going round and round about in the UK. Not all, but most. And they have to, because if they don't, cars pull out in front of them, so they can't actually get lazy with that right indicator. If they do, bad things happen. They end up braking because cars pull out in front, so they remember to indicate right to get cars to wait for them. Indicating right, though, is especially important if you're going right on a roundabout like this. On this roundabout, both lanes can go straight. So the vehicle's position is the same if it's coming round or leaving. The only way you know it's coming round is if it signals to the right. And as you know, in the UK, most people don't bother to signal when they leave the roundabout. You may have noticed though that more cars are signaling on this occasion. And that's because they understand they're in the lane closer to the roundabout and they look like they're coming round. So their signal is more important. However, having said that, many of them still didn't bother. What I do on that roundabout is I wait until someone is far enough away that I can make it with a quick start. Then I get going. I know someone could come round without the right indicator, but if I get going quickly, doesn't matter if they do or not, I'll still have time to make it. Is it normal for drivers to signal right on mini roundabouts? Well, that black car did, the white car is, the red car is going straight, as is the light blue car, and the police car is as well, so they don't need to signal. The silver van is signalling to go right round the mini roundabout and the oncoming burgundy SUV is. Although they're steering very early, that's not fair. That's scaring the blue Ford Fiesta. You should go round mini roundabouts for that reason, or one of the reasons. The oncoming truck is signalling and it's a good job because if they didn't, this black car would not have known they needed to wait. Do people signal left at mini roundabouts? Well, this oncoming silver Mercedes is and so isn't this grey Mercedes. The van is also signalling to turn left and the grey SUV uses their signal as well when they're turning left. It appears most drivers signal at mini roundabouts and that's because they understand it's critical on a mini roundabout. Without a signal, it can sometimes be near impossible to judge which way someone's going to go. And if drivers don't signal on mini roundabouts, collisions are much more likely. This is a small roundabout. It's not a mini roundabout, but it is small and it has five exits crammed around it. So signaling correctly on a roundabout like this is even more important than usual because all the cars look the same, whether they're going round the roundabout or leaving the roundabout, or at least until the very last moment when they do start to leave, which is why the signal is critical. Most drivers understand this and make the effort to signal correctly on roundabouts like this one. Not all drivers do, but most do. You can actually pass your driving test, even if you make someone break on a roundabout. Let's say you're gonna pull out into a roundabout there's a car on the roundabout that you might have to give way to, but the car is not signaling to come round and they're in a position to leave the roundabout. So they're not gonna come round towards you so you can go. The examiner feels the same way. The examiner feels, yeah, we can go and you go. But then that car does something erratic. They suddenly steer, go round the roundabout towards you and accelerate and then they have to brake for you. Well the examiner cannot hold you accountable for that. They can't expect you to predict erratic behavior. The examiner is gonna judge whether or not you made a good decision to go at the roundabout based on their feelings as well. If they thought it was safe and they could see someone was being quite frankly dangerous, they're not likely gonna blame it on you, so you should still pass. If you have a collision on test though, the chances are you won't pass, even if the collision's not your fault. And it won't necessarily be because you failed. It may be because the test was terminated. The driving examiner is not gonna continue a test if there's much damage to the car. And you have to finish the test to pass. But by far the best thing you can do to help you make decisions at roundabouts is to prepare the car before you try to decide. I have a video all about it up there in the top right hand corner of your screen, but I'll give you a quick demonstration now. When you approach the roundabout, instead of concentrating on whether or not it's safe to go, try and concentrate on the car. So I'm gonna slow down now, 
I'm going to get prepared to stop, but I'm also going to prepare the car to go. I'm going to get second gear, bring the clutch up, and I've still got a few seconds left before the give way line. Then I can look right, then it's easy for me to make my decision to stop or go. Because the clutch was up and I was in second gear, if I wanted to go, I just press the gas pedal. That makes my decision easier because there's not going to be much time today between me looking and actually being able to go. And if I decided I need to stop like I did then, then I just stop brake with the clutch down doesn't take long at that low speed you will need the clutch down straight away because the revs were very low and you don't want to make the car struggle or stall I'm well aware that around about 70% of my viewers aren't from the UK and if you're from a different country in Europe say Germany or Hungary it's not recommended that you signal as you go round roundabouts and I'm sure there's other European countries that do it that way as well and you may think why do you need a signal to go round a roundabout in the uk most people don't signal to leave they don't bother so the signals go round the roundabout is actually really helpful but if everybody reliably signaled to leave a roundabout then yeah the signals go round it isn't really needed because an absence of a signal means the car is continuing on the roundabout and when they signal to leave then you know they're leaving well, I hope this video helps you make decisions at roundabouts. If you think it does, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you're looking for car insurance, check out the links to conningwoodandconfused.com. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, Conningwood are there for you because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy. And at the moment, via the link, there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car, check out the link to confuse.com. You fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back to compare who's cheapest. And you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like, which is really handy when you're trying to compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.